My name is Ken Lundy. I've been at Adobe for over 28 years now. And it's good to see my former manager and my current manager in the audience in front of me. Um, so I, 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 had, I have, well, I hope, hopefully I have 20 minutes for this. Um, I did a dry run about a week ago with my, my wife and some good news and some bad news. The, the good news is that um, I should finish within 20 minutes. Uh, the bad news is that um, she rolled her eyes. Um, so this is, an, this is an exciting time for me, Japan, because um, they have a new era. So May 1st, um, it's now the Reiwa era. And the last time this happened was 30 years ago. And this affects standards. And our fonts are built on standards. Uh, Unicode is important. But there's a lot of history here about these um, so-called square ligature forms of the era name. Like, where did they come from? Because the preferred way to express the era names is as two separate kanji. So that's the default. That's the preferred way. But we also have these smaller, compressed, side-by-side, -side, two kanji square ligatures. So, so if we look back at the, um, or look at the, the, the five modern era names and their square ligatures, we have Meiji, Taisho, Showa, Heisei, and now Reiwa. And you can see here the two kanji that make up the era names, the square ligature forms, which are compressed left to right, the same kanji, but just tucked in a little bit. And then also when the era names began. And what's, what's really interesting that some of the people in the room, at least this, this room, probably aren't aware is that there's actually a law that was established in 1979 called the Era Name Law that uh, sets forth six criteria for selecting the, a new era name. So first of all, it must be something that is positive and is suitable for a national ideal. Next one, it must be two kanji. So it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be kana, it's not going to be emoji, thank God. Um, so two kanji. It must be easy to write. So it's not going to be a very complex kanji. It has to be easy to read. So number three and four strongly suggest that the kanji are going to be in or among the 2,136 Joyo kanji. It must not be something that has been used until now as, a, as an era or a posthumous name. So it kind of starts narrowing it down a little bit. And it must not be something that is commonly used. There's actually a seventh criteria that it's not in this era name law. Um, and it's more of a constraint. And the constraint is that there's a single Latin letter abbreviation for all of the era names. For example, Heisei is abbreviated as H because the first kanji is reading begins with an H. And what this effectively means is that the constraint is that a new era name now cannot begin with M for Meiji, T for Taisho, S for Showa, H for Heisei, and now R for Reiwa. So that's actually a seventh condition they have to consider. Um, I mentioned before that uh, there's going to be a lot of talk about standards in this presentation. And I like standards. Um, a lot of people find standards boring, like my wife. Um, and I, I, th I think that's why she made that, she rolled her eyes. So you know, that, that's OK. Um, but I have effectively made a career out of dealing with standards. So I, I enjoy this. So the, some of the standards we're going to cover um, at the beginning here are first Japanese national standards. Everything began in 1978 with the JIS-C6226, which is now known as JIS-X0208. Um, and then about 20 years ago, they established a new standard called JIS-X0213. Um, and things are going to get really interesting when we start covering Japanese corporate standards. So uh, the, uh, the one from NEC, from Microsoft, Apple, um, and then we also are going to cover international standards, Unicode and ISO 10646. And then finally, Japanese glyph set standards. So this, this is what, for example, the majority of Japanese fonts built today are built based on this glyph set standard, Adobe Japan 1.7, which we established in 1992. Okay, so going to the, the first GIST standard from 1978, I'm showing you here rows 2 and 13, and there's a reason I'm showing 2 and 13 here. Um, row 2 tells us that 
there's actually characters in rows. And row 13 tells us that they didn't put characters in all rows. But these two rows actually have a relationship, and um, you'll see why it's included as I go on. So a few years later, I think 1982, NEC decided to extend or make an extension to GIS 78. So they added 82 characters to row 13. And here are the three, at the time, error name ligatures. So Meiji, Taisho, and Showa. OK. So then um, the GIST standard was updated in 1983. We refer to this now as GIST 83. And they decided to add more characters to row 2. OK, and it turns out that nine of the characters that they added to row 2 are the same in NEC's extension in row 13. And you can see that they are outlined in red. So nothing changed with the error name ligatures uh, during this update. And still, there's no GIST standard that includes these characters. OK, so not much happened with regard to these square error name ligatures until the Heisei era. And that began uh, 30 years ago on January 8th of 1989. And the use of NEC row 13 in Microsoft and Apple OS has set a precedent to also make a square ligature of Heisei, which you can see here at the end of the line. And in terms of where they're going to put this character in NEC row 13, it turns out that there's two unassigned code points that were equal distance from the other error name ligatures. And we'll show those in a few minutes, or seconds, sorry. And that era ended on April 30th of this year. OK, so uh, the GIST standard was redesignated as X0208 and updated in 1990. No changes were made to row 2. Um, but uh, either Microsoft or NEC or a collaboration of those companies added the Heisei ligature form at this position, 1363. Um, as sort of an aside, I also highlighted the three katakana square ligatures that, are, that have three components. In the previous slide, the third component on the bottom was centered. And the typographically correct form of these three character ligatures is to have that third component left justified. So that's just an uh, additional detail. And then uh, around the same time, Apple released Kanji Talk 7. I believe it was 1992. And instead of updating row 13 like Microsoft and NEC did, they decided to completely rework their extension to the GIST standard. So the four error name ligatures are now in, or were, you know, because this is a legacy, uh, in row 14. And you can see that they're now in order from oldest to newest. So Meiji, Taisho, Showa, Heisei. And they also included three, four kanji square ligatures. The first one, which is Kabuchiki Gaisha, which is, means basically incorporated or corporation. That one's in Unicode. These other ones, Yugen Gaisha, which means limited company, and Zaidan Hojin, uh, which means foundation, those were never encoded. So we have these in fonts, and if you want to access them, you're going to use a, uh, uh, the, the DLIG um, feature. OK, now we get to the international standards. So Unicode and ISO 10646 actually represent the first non-corporate character set standards that include these error name ligatures. So the first time they showed up was in Unicode's preview from 1990, a year before they issued the standard. And you can see the code points. And also note the order. They're going, again, they're going from oldest to newest. When Unicode was finally released in 1991, they changed the code points. And they also reordered them. So it's now from newest to oldest. And ISO 10646, which is aligned to Unicode, that was released uh, in 1993. Next, we go back to the GIST standards. So in the year 2000, they uh, published GIST X0213, which is an extension to the other GIST standard, X0208. 
And it's the first GIST standard to include error name ligatures, which is actually not quite true because there is a Japanese version of ISO 10646 called GIST X0221. And, uh, but really for a, uh, a native Japanese standard, GIST X0213 would be the first one. Okay. So if we look at those two rows now in when we combine GIST X0208 and the new GIST standard, you can see that they completely filled up row two. So any available code point, would they just stuck some kind of symbol in there. Um, but in row 13, they removed the characters that are duplicate when you compare it to row two. They, well, basically they incorporated NEC row 13 as is while removing the duplicates. They also added four characters Right there, 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 and there. And they, are, they also incorporated the position of the Heisei ligature form. Okay, now we get to um, glyph set standards. So in 1992, we established Adobe Japan 1.0, and the three original error name ligatures were included, and uh, these were at CID 7621 through 7623. The next time we added one was in 1993 um, when we issued Supplement 1. So the Heisei um, ligature went to uh, CID 8323. Okay, now this, this is going to get more interesting, I hope. Don't roll your eyes too hard. Um, so when we worked on Supplement 4, which added uh, thousands of new glyphs for um, so-called pro-Japanese fonts um, in the year 2000, we added vertical forms of these four error name ligatures. So instead of being side by side, these are now stacked top, bottom for vertical writing. So these were at, or they, they are at CIDs 12041 through 12044. Um, what a lot of people don't know, including apparently people who are at FontWorks today, is that these were first implemented in the original um, fonts made by the Hong Kong based FontWorks. And that, was, that, that actually served as the inspiration for putting these into Supplement 4. And uh, these vertical forms are referenced in um, Unicode Standard Annex number 50, which is Unicode Vertical Text Layout. And also keep in mind that Japanese fonts do not universally support the vertical forms. So it's perfectly okay to issue a Japanese font without the vertical forms. If, if the vertical forms are there, they're used. If they're not, you just have this, the, the regular horizontal form. Okay, so this is a summary of the error name ligatures before we get to the, the current one, Rewa. And what this slide adds is the vertical form and it also adds the Adobe Japan 1, uh, sorry, at this Adobe Japan 1, 4 CIDs. Okay, so in, um, on April 1st of this year, there was a, an announcement. So the two kanji, Re and Wa, were selected to represent new, uh, Japan's new error name, Rewa. And by the way, Rewa means, uh, I believe, I, I had it, sorry. <laughs> Beautiful harmony. Okay. So at, at this point, now that they actually announced what the air name is going to be, um, then we can start working on the standards, okay? But we were actually able to start work before the announcement. And I'm going to get into why this is important. So um, in December of 2017, that's when the emperor declared that he is going to abdicate the throne. Sometime in December, Japan sent to um, ISO and to Unicode a document to request to reserve a code point for this character. So at the next UTC meeting, Unicode Technical Committee, the 154th one, which was in early January 2018, the code point 32FF was reserved. And this happened to be the closest unassigned code point to the other four similar characters. So what this then allowed Adobe to do was to issue the Adobe Japan 1.7 CMAP resources. This was done at the end of July last year. So in order to minimize risk, um, we decided that Supplement 7 would include exactly two, two glyphs. If we included any more, it would mean more risk. So we added CIDs 23058, 
Um, so 32FF maps to that. And we also have 23059, which is the vertical glyph. So the CMAP resources were now available to developers to start testing. They can actually build prototype fonts using some sort of placeholder glyph. You know, we, we even did that. And then I also updated the two Unicode mapping resource called Adobe Japan 1 UCS2. This is important for Acrobat. So if you get a PDF that includes only CID references, nothing else, this mapping resource allows those CIDs to, uh, I guess, uh, what, derive content. Okay, so you can associate these CIDs now with a Unicode value, in this case, 32FF. So now, after the announcement on April 1st, and actually, speaking of April 1st, um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> so, we have a very good designer on our team, Ryoko Nishizuka, she's here. So, she was able to design the glyphs very quickly, provide them to me, and because California is in a sort of back in time compared to Japan. What um, I was able to issue the actual specification with the glyph table on April 1st. And I have to tell you, it's not, it's very rare that I can actually publish something really important on that really interesting date, okay? I think the last time I did this was I um, released, does everybody know Adobe Blank? That's one of my typefaces. Okay, so I issued um, Adobe Blank 2 on April 1st, uh, so, yeah, April 1st of 2015. So anyway, that, that was kind of neat for me. And then um, we also updated the, uh, our pan CJK fonts, the open source ones, so Source Han Sans and uh, Noto Sans CJK. That, those were released on April 9th. And then also on April 9th, we updated um, Kozuka Mincho and Kozuka Gothic. Those are our flagship Japanese fonts. And they were updated to Adobe Japan 1.7. And this was all for, actually for font day. So font day in Japan is now April 10th. And I think a lot of the people maybe in the other room know why, it's, why font day is April 10th. Because the word font in Japanese is fonto. And the fon portion is kind of equivalent to the number four. And the to is equivalent to 10. Okay, so that's, that's why April 10th is now considered font day. So these, these were um, kind of announced or shown during font day. Um, there's another interesting day in Japan. Um, so there, there's, a, there's a snack. It's a, a breadstick with chocolate cover, pokey. There's also poki no hi, which is pokey day. And does anybody here know why or what day that is? So it's November 11th, okay? And, and my, my cat's a tuxedo cat, black body with white legs. His name is Pokey. <laughs> okay, and then um, uh, going on here, so April 17th, CLDR, um, which is Common Locale Data Repository, and International Components for Unicode were updated for not only the error name ligature, but also just for the error name because this affects calendars. So if you wanna have your dates show up correctly in your OSs and applications, you have to have libraries that do that correctly. So, uh, so as long as an OS or application updates to these new versions of CLDR or ICU, they get the right behavior out of the box. And then uh, Unicode version 12.1, um, which has a single character, 32FF, that was released on May 7th. And Unicode actually acted very quickly when you consider how much work is required for a release. Um, and they only released version 12 two months earlier. So within the span of two months, they issued a new version. And then Apple's Mac OS and iOS were updated um, on May 13th to support this. Uh, and I, I believe that SourceHan Mono, which is um, a derivative of SourceHan Sans, that was released at the end of May. And I believe that's the first new typeface that supports um, the new error name ligature. Microsoft updated various versions of, Mac, of Windows OS in May. And then finally, Google's Android Q Beta 4 was released in June. One thing that's not on the slide, because um, I really couldn't fit it, was that I was very hesitant to update the Heisei fonts 
with the Rewa ligature. It didn't really make sense, but uh, we received requests to add them, so I reluctantly updated our two core Heisei fonts to include the Rewa ligature. So I, I just find that really ironic for some reason. Okay, and then we're, uh, we're getting close to the end here. So um, one thing I've been thinking about is, okay, now, now that we have this new character, and because the four previous error name ligatures are in this JISX0231 standard, are they going to update it to include it? So in red here, you can kind of see one possible position for that character. And we shall see. I mean, this is beyond my control, so it just, I'm just kind of curious, you know, whether that's going to happen. So this slide here, pretty much the last one, is a summary of the uh, five modern error name ligatures. So you have the, the error name in, um, uh, in Latin. You have the ideographs, the horizontal vertical, showing the Adobe Japan 1.7 CIDs now, uh, the Unicode value, and the Unicode version. So that's all relevant. Um, so this will be made, made available as a PDF. Um, if you're on Twitter, you can probably find it soon. Um, and the yellow text are links for further information. I strongly encourage that you click on the Adobe Japan 1.6 is expecting. That's a really fun one. But I mean, all of them are really important for developers. So um, if you develop Japanese fonts, um, I think all of this stuff will be very important to you. So um, hopefully that wasn't too boring. And um, thank you very much. <laughs>